All right. Again, good morning. Today we're going to go over the review of all the July application releases. So let's go back to the home page. Down here at the recaps. And again, please feel free to ask questions. I'm not always good at catching the chat, so just let me know if I miss it. We're in a review in July. During July, USAS had two releases and one hot fix, which included a bug um, that was fixed in the accounts receivable module where the user was trying to query by the due date and it was throwing an error because the location of the vendor had been deleted. So it was throwing that error, letting the user know that's been corrected. And then the AR ledger has been corrected to remove the billing amount shown with payments. This was inflating the, the ledger. So let me show you what, what I mean. So you have the, the type, the billing amount, but when you, <clears throat> previously, it was also attached to the payment. So when you ran a report from the grid, it was inflating it. So that's been corrected and you see it's blank on the payment amount. Oh, and the federal expenditure figures. This only impacted districts when a prior year advance was repaid in the current fiscal year. So for example, um, I have this cash summary report for June, so fiscal year 24, and I see that um, give me a moment. This one. So it's fiscal year 2024, but lot the year before 9923 is the special cost center. So during fiscal year 24, 5,050 was received for the prior year's grant. So that should not be included on the federal expenditures when you're doing this grid, and it was. So that was before that 5,050 was populating in here and it was incorrect. So that was corrected and you can see now that it's zero as it should be because, oh, I'm sorry, in the expenditures. No, received, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I wish we weren't recorded. So, but it, the bottom line is it's working correctly now. All right, so, and then prior, we were creating test pending track transactions and the support instances, and now we are not doing that. Um, we're no longer creating the test data in the instances of type support. And then, if you recall, the save button on the report scheduler wasn't appearing to be um, saved. So they had to like reschedule it. So that's been corrected. And the next improvement includes the output field on the report bundle scheduler. So let's go to that and I'll show you what I mean. So I guess it doesn't really matter which one. Now, no matter, you see how this is unenabled and it's unenabled for all job types until the necessary information is populated. So you got to have an output to before that becomes um, available. That would be in like an email. 
So that's been a good improvement. And then we had some uh, performance improvements. Um, the pending transactions were improved by 45% when posting. And during that improvement process that the developers were doing, the side effect also noted an improvement with the AP pro invoice processing, and that in improved by 15%. Even 1% would be good. The other improvement would be the PO user interface responsiveness. So I'm gonna show you what this means. I gotta look in my notes for the PO. So the notes say that the improvement was because the way the grid was loading, instead of individually loading line by line, it is now going to do it like 15 items at a time. So when I pull up a PO that has, I forget how many lines, but more than 15. Even if I go to the big screen, well, I won't do that. So you can see like you have these two scrolls. So you'll see 15 and then it's, it's a matter of loading what you see. So now so much is loaded before the scroll and that improves the performance of loading the screen if that makes sense. If not, please let me know if you have any questions. Um, fund, a new fund was created by the Auditor of State. It was 592. It's for federal grant monies received through the Ohio Facilities Construction Commission. So that's available in USAS now. And when you're setting that up, the fund type is now required before saving that new fund. So that will help. And then I put the error that you would get in the field, but I'll show you that field, 592. So when you're uh, creating a new one, See how the fun type is highlighted? And if I try to save, it's gonna throw that error. So we, we will no longer wonder why this fund doesn't appear on some reports, such as a certificate, because it wasn't defined. So that's a nice improvement. And then the rest endpoint was updated for the organization, like the district name and the ID. And the accounts payable report can now be generated in CSV and the Excel data formats. The field names formats had been removed. This is still not a pretty report if you do this, um, but it's, it, it can be used. It has like the headers of the PDF report on the CSV. So we'll talk to the team about that. It wasn't as like what I anticipated it to be for Excel data. The ability to unmerge vendors have been implemented and this will redo what you did when you merged the vendor. So I have an example of this. And I've already merged them. So, and I did pull in a couple fields on the regular default vendor grid. I believe I pulled in, well, I definitely pulled in these types because I was gonna show you that these must match before you merge. So you can see the last two were effectively merged, which is also indicated here. 
and it shows where it was merged to and in the year. But first, before I unmerge these, um, I was going to show you something, but I can't find it. Okay, here we go. So before the merge, I had this purchase order detail with those two vendors, the Apple Orchard and the McQueen's Apple Orchard. And the Apple Orchard was merged into the McQueen's. So before I did that, we had both vendors on the PO report including amount sitting in payables, ready to be dispersed. It's filled, but it's not dispersed. And amounts paid for each of these vendors, as well as remaining encumbrances. So when we merged, now we have it all to McQueen's. When we unmerge, we want to go back to this. So that's why I'm showing you that. So we're going to go back and unmerge. And you see this. This vendor has been merged with the current vendor. So if I click this, my unmerge button comes available with the tooltip. I click that and it, of course, asks you, are you really sure? And I believe, oops, sorry. I thought I got a report, but I didn't then. So now they're not merged. That information is gone, even though they still have the same information. And then if I run a PO report, oh, I was thinking of this. This was the, mer the, the report that showed that I merged. So now after the merge, if I run it, it's going to re reflect the two vendors as it did before with the invoice sitting in payables for the Apple Orchard. Now the Apple Orchard was merged to the McQueen's. So let's go to payables and I'll show you that that is truly the Apple Orchard, even though I ran this report yesterday. So since we unmerge, it should still be sitting in payables. Pat, you have one question in chat. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's only going to be effective for the full calendar year. Um, That didn't unmerge the uh, payable, even though one oh six. I'm running the PO report for both vendors. What's up that? 
Oh, I missed another one. I'm sorry. So the PO is back to that, but you will have to modify the invoice, it looks like. Um, I'll check into that for sure. But what you can do here or at the, um, let's go back to the invoice. 106. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to process this. I believe you're going to have to. Yeah. Yeah, the invoice was under the apples, so that didn't work as planned. It never does live. <laughs> I apologize for that. Um, so we'll give you an update on that. Another um, improvement, and you guys, the users probably didn't even notice this. The five-year forecast was updated per ODE or ODEW back in 2019, and they removed the lines. Well, I guess the auditor of state finally caught up and removed those lines. So what I'm talking about is the extract on the five-year forecast. These lines down here were removed. So now when you do the five-year forecast, you're not gonna see those lines. And I just took screenshots for the, um, to sh show you what I mean. And then we had internal things done with the rust controllers for civil proceedings and then the count filters and roles. Any questions? on you, SAS. I'm going to jump ahead because for inventory, we only had a hot fix and it was a hot fix that corrected a problem where the, like the template data was not being loaded into the empty database. So that it was resulting in an error. So that's been uh, updated. That's the only thing related to inventory. And then the other thing I'm going to jump to, since that's quick too, is there's a new workflow release. And this release is necessary when districts are using the employee self-service. So when the employee self-service is on this version, 2024.2, they must also have the workflow version 1.3.0. And that just updated the uh, the workflow release, just updated the optional note parameter so that it, it flows, I guess. So before I hand it over to Lori for USPS, does anybody have questions on any of that USAS inventory workflows? Oops. All right. Have a good Friday. Thank you. All right. Good morning, everyone. Um, we'll go ahead and move on to um, the payroll side. And we're going to make this short and sweet. Um, as most of you um, already know our almost our entire development team on the payroll side have um, been pulled and their efforts have been um, directed towards the ESS project. So we have just a couple um, bug fixes and improvements to cover this morning. 
for the month of July. And we have one hot fix and we had a regular uh, release. When it comes to the bug fixes, um, we had uh, made a change in June to um, update the surcharge amount. And when that correction was made to update the amount, um, we inadvertently um, caused a bug that was um, causing the report to air out for any employee that had a total amount charged of zero. Um, so obviously not um, the way things were intended to be um, changed. So that has been corrected. So the air should the report should run air free, excuse me, and um, that problem will no longer um, happen. Next, we also um, several releases ago, updated when you initialize a payroll um, and the air reports produced. Um, there were several re requests for when a payroll item maximum was reached that this error only be displayed for the first time. Um, I think users were getting kind of, um, you know, tired of seeing that error um, displayed at, at the end of the year mainly when, you know, those maximums are reached for maybe union dues, um, you know, United Way, those kind of things. Um, you know, over the summer months, once that maximum was reached, it, that error was being produced every single payroll that hit. Um, so now um, that was changed again several releases ago to only hit that first or be displayed that first time the maximums reached. However, inadvertently, um, not all payroll types, um, payroll item types, excuse me, were displaying the error correctly. So that has been corrected so that no matter what the type is, whether it be an annuity type, a regular type, that um, payroll item maximum will always be displayed the first time that employee reaches that maximum. So I've listed both of those warnings here. Um, you can see that it, you know, spells out whether it's an annuity or a regular type, and then the employee that um, that affects. Um, this will be both on the initialized air report as well as the posted pay re um, air report. So once the payroll is posted in the air report that's generated after the fact, um, those errors will also be displayed there. And then lastly, when it comes to the bug fixes, an update was made to the employee onboarding so that those users with that USPS workflows admin role can now delete workflows. So um, we made a, a change so that, you know, those admin type roles can delete workflows. When it comes to improvements, um, as Pat mentioned on the USAS side, um, that REST version controller was updated to include the organization name and the ID. So that was kind of an, uh, an enhancement that happened across all um, packages. And then lastly, um, the default salary notice, it was reported that um, several um, salary notices into the PDF file, um, the, the notice, the printing actually started creeping down the page so that page break wasn't being handled correctly. Um, so now the default salary notice was updated so that page break is correctly placed in the right spot. And so you shouldn't no longer see those notices, you know, the printing starting, you know, maybe a quarter of the way down the page. And then it, it just kept, you know, creeping down um, the more salary notices you got into the PDF file. So that's been corrected as well. Um, we had a couple patches. It was, you know, I think back in April, maybe we changed the um, way that the payroll accounts were being displayed. So we kind of separated those out into those various account dimensions. And then the account dimensions actually mimic, or I'm sorry, the, the names of those account dimensions match the USAS side, so it makes them more, you know, user friendly. Um, so there was a patch that had to be applied at that time because of the formatting change. Um, and it was reported by a, 
a district when they went to run the account history report that they were actually missing some um, payroll accounts. So when our development team looked into this, it was caused by that patch that was applied um, to the districts for that um, those account uh, changes at that time, for whatever reason, didn't complete correctly. Um, so again, that was only reported by a single district and, and that was corrected um, along with there was um, a patch created by our development team to make sure that this was not going to be the case for any other district. So um, kind of a double check sort of thing. That is all we had in the month of July for the payroll side. Um, does anyone have any questions about anything that we covered? I know it wasn't a whole lot. I don't see anything in chat. Um, before we wrap up the session this morning, I just wanted to point out that next um, Friday, August 9th, I'm not sure how it's already August, but here we are. Um, we will be um, having our uh, Fridays with Fiscal session about the start of the school year with when it comes to EMIS reporting. So last Friday, we covered sort of the end of the year, um, the, that final staff collection. Now we're going to be covering the, the beginning. So um, feel free to join us next Friday and talk about starting up another school year um, on the EMIS side of things. All right. I hope everyone has a wonderful Friday, um, a wonderful weekend, and we'll we'll talk to everybody soon. Thank you.